the secret to devising creative and efficient solutions to automation problems in your business is understanding all the different technologies and options that exist out there. Today we'll be looking at end of arm tooling and end effectors and what each of these solutions excels at. So you will have a good idea of what you should be looking for to meet your automation application needs. Most people think of end of arm tooling or end effectors as tools or implements on the end of a six axis robot arm. But I'd like you to think about end of arm tooling in a more general sense. End of arm tooling can be used in any robot type, not just six axis robot arms. You can use them with robot arms that have three axes. It can be used on the end of a Cartesian robot, a SCAR robot, or even a Delta robot. End of arm tooling can be used at every stage of the manufacturing process. Material handling, milling or shaping the product, machine tending, post-processing, sorting and reorienting the product, assembly, packaging and palletizing. There are also many different types of end of arm tooling that can be repurposed for any of those applications. Many types of grippers like mechanical grippers, soft robotic grippers, vacuum grippers, magnetic grippers, electroadhesion, and even process tools. And we have some great examples of each of these in this video. When most people think of a robot, they probably think of a mechanical gripper that has two fingers. But mechanical grippers can have up to three or five fingers that are used to grip objects. An advantage of a standard two finger gripper is that the jaws can be easily customized to locate the parts accurately as well as provide a solid grip on the part. And these jaws can be made to grab the part from inside diameters and also from the outside. There are also plenty of innovative mechanical designs that allow robots to pinch objects while providing some compliance. This is useful when there may be an arrangement of both rigid and delicate objects. And some of these designs also provide a different grip configuration that allows for objects to be held very securely during fast motions. Adaptive gripping solutions are some of the most innovative and fascinating mechanical end of arm tooling I've seen. This solution uses pins to securely grasp objects with widely varying shapes. And this is a similar design, but it uses a counter-rotating concentric pin array to lock objects into place. I certainly admire the ingenuity and mechanical design behind these solutions, but many of these are early in their development and not readily available on the shelves just yet. And in most applications, we can get great performance from simpler and cheaper end of arm tooling, such as the simple two finger gripper. Mechanical grippers can be powered by pneumatics, hydraulics, or electric motors. And the grip pressure and force can be controlled with most of these driving methods. In general, compressed air or pneumatic grippers are not very energy efficient. And the industry is taking steps to phase this method of power out where possible. The main disadvantage of mechanical gripping is that it does not lend itself well to holding on to flat surfaces such as sheet metal or tiles. And it can also leave marks on sensitive surfaces such as glass or mirrors. Soft grippers. Soft robotics have made their way into end of arm tooling. These tentacle-like grippers were developed to provide compliance in gripping applications. This is extremely important for many delicate handling applications including the handling of things like eggs, vegetables, organic products, and plastic packages. Unlike many mechanical grippers, these soft robotic grippers don't present a pinching hazard to operators. And where rigid grippers require more precise instructions to grab objects, the compliance of these grippers allow for much simpler algorithms to be used to grab objects and to program the robots that are using them. They are predominantly being used in the textile and food industries in packaging applications where the manipulation of softer objects is prevalent. Typically, the disadvantage of using this type of gripper is that it has difficulty picking up heavy items. Its grasp is imprecise compared to other methods of grasping and other end of arm tooling. The flexible plastics and rubbers that are used in these grippers do need to be replaced after some time. And in general, there's less control of the grip force because it is pneumatically actuated when you compare this to other end of arm tooling that uses electrical actuation. 
On the positive side, these grippers are helping to address labor shortages in packaging. Packaging jobs are generally not desirable jobs as they involve repetitive manual labor, sometimes in freezers. The work is boring with repetitive movements and sometimes involves heavy loads that can often turn into repetitive injuries. And because of the undesirable working conditions, many of these monotonous packing jobs suffer from high turnover, which is a real problem for the packaging business. This amorphous gripper is both mechanical, pneumatic, and vacuum all in one. It works because of a principle called granular jamming. The granules are similar to crushed gravel used for drainage or coffee grounds. And when the balloon is pressurized, the granules move freely around the object that is pressed into it. When the vacuum is applied, the granules jam together and the friction between the individual granules causes the balloon to hold its shape. This is what grips the object. This type of gripper helps you pick up a wide variety of shapes quite delicately. Since the actuation of the gripper is simply on or off, it greatly simplifies robot programming. However, it does have similar disadvantages as the soft robotic grippers you saw earlier in the video. There are flexible plastic or rubber parts that need to be replaced after some time. There's less control of the grip force compared to other end effectors. And of course, you cannot locate the part accurately with this type of flexible and adaptive end of arm tooling. Foam grippers conform to the shape of objects so that objects without a uniformly flat surface can be vacuum gripped. These are often used in palletizing applications to move boxes onto pallets. Like all vacuum applications, grip force is directly proportional to surface area, and therefore it is not suitable for picking up heavy items with very low surface area. Suction cup vacuum grippers are typically very quiet and used for pick and place applications. The layout of the suction cups is easily customizable and grip actuation is very fast, which makes them suitable for high speed pick and place applications. They excel at flat or delicate objects with few or no good grasp points, and their adaptability can also be helpful in smaller awkward workspaces where it may be difficult to maneuver a mechanical gripper into the grasping position. Vacuum grippers are also not suitable for textiles or other porous objects that will not hold a vacuum. Magnetic grippers. Magnetic grippers excel in applications that handle heavy ferrous metal objects. Moving speeds are limited though due to the heavy loads and the risk of the load falling off the end effector. There are a few grippers that are extremely specialized for the textile industry. These needle grippers penetrate textiles and allow them to be securely moved from one place to another. They are relatively inexpensive, actuate quickly, and hold fabrics very securely. Most importantly, they can be calibrated to separate single sheets of fabric from a stack. Electroadhesion is the electrostatic effect of a stiction between two surfaces subjected to an electric field. These grippers are suitable for flat surfaces such as glass, metal fabric, and printed circuit boards. It's fast to actuate, and for the textile industry, it is significantly more expensive than needle grippers. However, it does not poke holes into the material it is handling, perhaps making it more suitable for items like masks. The main challenge in the textile industry is being able to separate a single layer of fabric from a stack, and these electrostatic grippers excel at that as well. Customized end of arm tooling. There are many reasons you might want to build a custom end effector or customize your end effector. You might want to handle multiple parts in one trip, which allows you to simplify robot motion and make fewer trips handle different types of parts simultaneously, which increases your robot utilization. You might want to reorient parts while moving them, handle parts that have unique shapes. Since robots can't see, often an upright mounted fixture is used to help the robot ensure that the grip of the part is repeatable. Customizing the geometry of your end of arm tooling with features such as cones, notches, chamfered pins, and V-notches can also be used to improve the location of parts in the gripper and improve grip repeatability without the use of sensors. This is an example of a specialized end effector used for moving box shaped objects and it's most often used for palletizing. And this end effector design combines a mechanical gripper for moving pallets and vacuum gripping for placing the divider boards in between layers of cans. A second robot uses a magnetic end effector to transfer the cans onto each pallet. Extremely specialized applications such as the handling of silicone wafers can present unique and stringent handling requirements. Check out how this specialized end effector 
handles silicon wafers without contacting them. A commonly cited disadvantage of custom end effectors is that it adds additional cost and time to get the system up and running. Depending on the application, this increased cost can pay off as well-designed custom end effectors or customized end-of-arm tooling will allow for greater efficiency and throughput. Many end effector systems these days also incorporate modular elements, which can allow for fast customization. This means quicker system build times and lower costs while still achieving a high level of performance when compared to off-the-shelf solutions. End of arm tooling isn't just for moving objects from place to place. It can also be used to shape products using a live spindle and other types of powered tools. Deburring. Deburring is needed for post-processing of almost all machine parts as well as castings. Force control and tools with built-in compliance can help robots achieve more consistent deburring results with simpler tool paths. Grinding and cutting. Grinding and cutting are also common processes that are done in the post-processing of castings. Sanding and polishing. Sanding is an extremely monotonous task. The particulates are harmful towards people and it's hard work on the hands. People can also be terribly inconsistent when it comes to sanding objects evenly. Sanding and polishing applications are almost in every industry, including automobile, marine, aerospace, and furniture industries. Milling. Robotic milling certainly can't match the rigidity of a CNC machine or its tolerances. Typically, it's used for trimming molded parts as well as milling large objects with less stringent tolerances. And robot arms lend themselves really well to working in large open spaces on these large objects. Welding and spot welding. Welding and spot welding are useful manufacturing processes in anything structural, including automobile frames, screw piles, mounting brackets, and structural skids, just to name a few welded products. Robots excel at moving at a constant rate and delivering uniform welds, whereas this type of work could be considered monotonous and fatiguing for a human welder. Painting is also another process that is required in many industries. This clip shows an operator training the robot on how to paint furniture products, followed by the robots executing the train program. Automated tool changes allow robots to complete more than one process at a time by changing their end of arm tooling. Typically, this is accomplished via a proprietary tool changer, as well as a rack of tools that are easily accessed by the robot. An alternative to end of arm tooling is just to grip the part with a robot and to bring the part to the tool. For example, a robot could grip a cast part and drag the edge along a stationary deburring spindle. This opens up a huge amount of potential for each robot. With the ability to change tools, it makes it easier for the robot to get more done in a single work cell. And in some cases, it enables the work cell to put out completed parts with absolutely no post-processing required. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the many types and uses for end of arm tooling. For everything that you need to know about automated work cell design, automated part swapping, and machine tending, please check out my last video, and the link for that is in the description below. For more tips on how to transform your manufacturing business with automation, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next video. Please take a moment to share this video with someone who might benefit. And again, thanks for watching. I'm Stephen Bruce Wong with Automation Experts, and I will see you in the next one.